Good evening. Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Frank Skinner. In the news this week, there's excitement at Oxbridge Station where it's announced that a train full of lingerie models has broken down on Platform 3. <laughs> Scotland Yard chases down another suspect in connection with the Hatton Garden robbery. <laughs> and in Folkestone, there's news that the Tories are testing out a scheme to stop illegal immigration. Help me bring it in. <laughs> Arnie Ian's team tonight is a comedian and star of improv, where there are no rules and you just make it up as you go along. A bit like rugby. <laughs> Please welcome Carrie Ad Lloyd. <laughs> and with Paul tonight is the author of The Psychopath Test, a very popular book. It's on a lot of people's bedside tables. I know, I've seen them as I stare in through their windows. <laughs> Please welcome John Ronson. <laughs> and we start with the bigger stories of the week. Ian and Cariad, take a look at this. Oh, that's the new intake going into Parliament. Yeah. And here they're dragging John Burkow out, saying, no, you're too embarrassing, get out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to read about your wife anymore. Go on, out, out you go. It was the SNPs, wasn't it? They, they all sat you... in the back row, didn't they? They sat on the rebels' bench, but Dennis Skinner sits there, doesn't he? Yes, but they tried to push him out, and apparently he clung on with one buttock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was... Um... He's quite old now. <clears throat> yeah. Just sort of there. And then a, he held on, didn't he? There was a tiny gap and, like, an old lady on the bus, he was like, that's mine. <laughs> and then he wedged his way in. I don't well, know, they then great, just because the buttocks get a lot more free-flowing as you get older. <laughs> <laughs> do they, Frank? Yeah, they yeah, do. Okay. I'm actually sitting partly on your chair. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened was that the police with sniffer dogs came in to do a routine search of the chamber and told the SNP MPs that they had to go out while it was checked. And then Dennis Skinner <gasps> scorried in. <laughs> and sat down and he said I only had half a cheek on but I was there before them and I will be there when they are gone <laughs> there's nothing we like more than a, a grumpy English man getting his seat is a definitely <laughs> if you're watching dad well done <laughs> And the, uh, the speaker dragging, that's like an ancient ritual. Yeah. Where does it come from? Um, I should imagine it comes from something that's called history. <laughs> <laughs> is it because in ancient times, like, it wasn't a good job to be the speaker? Yeah, so I believe to... it is that, yeah. I'm interested, you know, I've done a lot of work over the years about, about weird rituals amongst, mm -hmm. the, amongst the ruling classes, mm -hmm. and there's a predominance of them, and mm. it's real. So there's like these secret clubs in America. I snuck into one one time called Bohemian Grove, where people like uh, George Bush... Uh, where people like George Bush, really. Very <laughs> 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 hard like, to find. They have a ceremony. They have like a kind of mock human ritual. The mock human... The kind sacrifice. Of sa sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. A ceremony that culminates in a papier-mâché effigy being thrown into the <laughs> fiery belly of a giant stone owl. You know, it's been, uh, John, John Major's been to this. Has uh, he? Yeah, and Chris Batten's been to this. And, and I snuck in. I snuck in and witnessed the owl-burning ritual. <laughs> Basically, like, like, they bring this sort of uh, papier-mâché effigy on a gondola, and I'm in the crowd pretending to be a kind of preppy old man, because that's the way to, to get in. You have to pretend to be a preppy old, a rich old preppy man. And you, um, and, and, and then the voice of the, is this, I, I'm not... That's good, keep going. I couldn't bear not to hear the end of this. Okay. <laughs> so, my bucket list. It's <laughs> so then, uh, like, <laughs> into this sort of place called Bohemian God. And, um... So they Did bring... I miss something in the question? <laughs> right. Anyway, would you like to see a clip of the owl sacrifice? <laughs> we don't have one. We don't have that level of spontaneity. <laughs> How did we know he was going to bring up the owl sacrifice? Yeah. <laughs> we didn't sit around in a room and say, oh, Ronson will bring up the owl yeah, sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> 
Put in John Ronson Mock Human Sacrifice into YouTube and you'll get the owl sacrifice. <laughs> and I don't feel I need to now. Is it done? Is that, what's the ending? Oh, well... <laughs> I have a feeling you just list of questions yeah. I regret. Oh, no, most it's a long... Life. I mean, <laughs> it, would, it would take the whole... It would take a long time to well, it explain. Has. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, the upshot yeah. is they pick up they pick up the uh, the effigy that's being thrown into the... And then you hear the voice of the effigy going, No, you shall not burn me! And then they chuck it into the fire, and it goes, Ah! And then I left and went home. <laughs> it was the best night of my life. <laughs> <laughs> So I've been Frank Skinner. <laughs> <laughs> yes, anyway, as you say, um, that, it, that was Burko being dragged to the speaker's chair because it used to be a job that uh, no one wanted. And of them, any other traditions, there's one where MPs wishing to speak in a debate have to catch the speaker's eye, and that is called catching the speaker's <laughs> eye. <laughs> so um, now a discussion regarding pomp would be complete without a reference to Michael Gove. What is going on here? <laughs> he looks very happy, doesn't he? He's just as sexy, but he's got to become Lord Chancellor as well, even though he's not actually a lawyer. He was Minister for being very unpopular at schools, um, <laughs> and he's now going to be Minister for being really unpopular, yeah. um, dropping the Human Rights Act and reforming prisons. Do you think when he was at school, he thought, I hate being hated by everyone in school. <laughs> that will stop soon. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he, like, the worst justice minister possible? He wistfully... He's only just started. Well, <laughs> look at his track record. Like, he wistfully writes columns about bringing back hanging. I saw him on a train once. He had a very, very big behind. <laughs> <laughs> Much bigger than proportionally um, I felt he, he, he should He would struggle to get on the rebel given. bench. That's what I can mean. see why he's pro-hanging. They'd, they'd never get him through the trapdoor. <laughs> <laughs> but he is. Honestly, I thought he was leading a horse. <laughs> I'm not saying that that makes him a bad person, that's just a coincidence. <laughs> it's been another exciting week for you, Kip, as they continue to show how refreshingly different they are from those other infighting, backstabbing parties. So let's catch up with all the goings on. It's a quick fire round mm. called I Know This Is Quick, But You're Fired. <laughs> so, fingers on buzzers, who's this and what's she been fired from? <laughs> Ian, carry on. Is that Suzanne? Evans. It is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Even she didn't know that. <laughs> I'm just sort of proud and ashamed that I know who she is, but she was the uh, policymaker for UKIP. She's, she's gone. gone. She resigned, but she said she wasn't pushed out. She claimed that it's just the job was done, even though the job still has to be done, so she probably has been pushed out. But I, I don't know, maybe she has leadership hopes, actually. That's what I was thinking. Well, it's, it's part of UKIP doing that classic sort of rats in a sack thing, isn't it? Mm. Um, well, it's a bit Lord of the Flies, that's what I feel. It's gone a bit Lord of the Flies. Come on, guys. No one read their GCC English text recently? <laughs> yeah, I was just trying to think who was Piggy. Oh, I think... Because uh, he won. I think Doug Douglas Carswell is Piggy. Oh, right. Because he's sort of the one who got elected. <laughs> stay, stay with me, guys. English, yeah. English GCC. <laughs> You're going to be tested on this afterwards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because he won and he thought... He's the only one who got the seat, so he yeah. probably thought, oh, well, this is my turn, I'm going to be leader now. And now he's not. Farage has taken his glasses and broken them. That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's a seat. <laughs> <laughs> You're quite tough, but you, it's a pass. Okay. Are your fingers still on your buzzers? <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, no. We are. She's gone. She's, She's gone. gone. She's okay. Honest. Who's this and what's he been fired from? Oh, Patrick O'Flynn? He's mm. correct. Yes. Wow. He's got a magnetic mouth, as you can see. It's attracted yes. by a bus that's gone past. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's gone as well. He was the one who said that Farage should oh, thin become skinned. nasty and thin-skinned yeah. and, and aggressive. And and aggressive. Which, yeah. you know, he, Farage proved he hasn't by sacking everyone. Yeah. But then he took it back. Then he said, oh, I didn't mean to call him that. Yeah, how scared was that? Yeah. But that's well, if you... Sorry, no, I'm trying <laughs> It's worse than you, Kip, here. Just... There's just... no room for any other views. <laughs> it's proper bullying. Look, I'm the leader of this team. <laughs> I don't want to be piggy! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't want to be piggy! Mm -hmm. Too much knowledge on you, Kip. I've never been on a team with someone who knew... Three people in UKIP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that came out well. That came out 
that as a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's never a compliment. How did leader Nigel Farage sum up this week's events? Storm in a teacup. He told the BBC, I think UKIP has never been more united around me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Nigel Farage's week got even better when he arrived for a new session at the European Parliament. German MEP Manfred Weber told the European Parliament, I would like to welcome Mr Farage, the big election loser. <laughs> Belgian MEP Guy Verhofstadt's summary of events. Mm. He said, Nigel Farage has sent a letter to Nigel Farage saying I resign, and Nigel Farage has responded to Nigel Farage saying I refuse. That's the way it works there. <laughs> <laughs> Who was going head to head over at Lib Dem HQ? Oh, um, Tim Fallon's the name of one of them. Yes. But I don't know the name of the other one. Norman Lamb? Norman, Norman Lamb. Lamb. That's right, that's the big battle. Fallon and Lamb. That sounds nice, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> like a nice yeah. pub. Yeah. That's what they should do. They should start a pub. If they can organise it, that is. <laughs> <laughs> so, apart from uh, Chuka Amuna, who isn't going to stand for the Labour leadership? Oh, Tristram Hunt. Tristram Hunt. He's dreamy. Yeah. So, I, come on, know, compared to Andy Burnham, he's dreamy. Yeah. I've been I've been in living in America for the last three years, and all I'm all I know about British politics is what I've, I'm hearing on the radio on the world tonight, and so I'm seeing everybody's faces mm. for the first time. And, and are you I already thinking well, dreamy? Well, I was surprised at how <laughs> I was a little surprised at how dreamy Michael Gove was. <laughs> Do you mean dreamy in the sense of Nightmare. not there, unfocused, and not going to get in, <laughs> <laughs> or more fit? When you've had too much brie and you wake up sweating and you see Michael Gove. Just me. Just me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you try pushing him over. Impossible. <laughs> um, Tristram Hunt didn't get enough signatures, which I think is the saddest thing I've ever heard. But he forgot one of the basic rules of the Labour Constitution is that if you're called Tristram, yeah. you're not allowed to be leader. No. Yeah. no. Because you sound posh. You sound posh. Yeah. And that, that won't do at the moment. No, They're they, not doing posh. They want Andy Burnham slash McNabb, who's, <laughs> who's a real, real Labour man. I heard somebody say that he had an inspirational backstory, but then they didn't say what the inspirational backstory was. Does anyone know what No, his... that's the best way to win, I think. Right. <laughs> Just yeah, say, oh, by the way, I have an inspirational backstory. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> so who does that leave, then? Who are the candidates? Liz... Uh, Yvette, oh, Cooper? Yvette Cooper. Liz Kendall is the mm -hmm. other one. Mm -hmm. Dark horse of the race. The official list is Liz Kendall, Andy Burnham, Yvette Cooper and Mary Somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Is that who it is? Yeah, okay. so. Who is that, Ian? Mary Creer. I think it is, is Mary Creer. Creer. I've got that wrong. I don't know. Oh, right. <laughs> I've well, had a, they, I've they had a really team of through. researchers on this today. The whole team Sorry, has been working on it. Sorry, member of the audience? Mary Creer. Mary yeah. Cray, I've pronounced the name wrong. Yeah. How okay. embarrassing. Are you related? <laughs> <laughs> he's another no, Cray. He's already, he's already ceased to back her. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she doesn't watch this. Should we, should we feel like Tristram Hunt? Should we get in her 34th signature and just going, No, no, because it. she will be thinking, yes, when I win the leadership, they'll be laughing on the other side yeah. of their faces. They'll be the first in the owl. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd really like to talk about Paul Dennis. He stood yeah. for the Trade Union and Socialist Coalition in the Medway Council elections in Kent. Now, why is he still demanding a recount? He didn't oh, get any. Oh. He didn't get any votes. Oh. <laughs> <That's all. laughs> but what I love, he said it was impossible because he definitely voted for himself. <laughs> anyway, so the actual government, what did David Cameron announce in Birmingham this week? There was going to be a seven-day-a-week NHS that... that was very, oh, yes. very shaky on the details. Yes. Yes. 5,000 new GPs and, the, and they're complaining about immigration, so... That'll be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so how is, it like be, how is it going to be paid for then? Is any? It's going to be paid for out of efficiency savings, right. <laughs> <laughs> which means sacking people usually. Um, I don't know. It's just the idea that the NHS wasn't seven days is a bit of a scandal anyway. One of the reasons yeah. it's not seven days is because GPs were given this amazing contract where they didn't have to work after hours anymore, and all that was outsourced to other people who said they'd do it cheaper. And like most outsourcing, you do it cheaper because you don't do it very well. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, it's the 
the last three years living under the American health system, and believe me, you do not want to give up on the NHS over here. I went with a bad back to the doctor a couple of weeks ago in, in New York. Is this your inspirational backstory? Oh, no. <laughs> Immediately, they, they, uh, <laughs> they took an x-ray, told me I had a lytic lesion, so I said, how do you spell that? And I tapped it into Google, and that straight away comes up, stage four cancer. <laughs> so uh, they said, but it's okay, we've set you up an MRI, are you free in the next 45 minutes? So That's I turned a hell up. of a waiting list. Yeah. <laughs> so I turned up, and they give me the MRI, and then they give me a CD of my internal organs, which I then took home, and compared to photographs on Google of stage four oh, bone yeah. cancer. And I tell you what, to an untrained eye, it all looks like cancer. <laughs> <laughs> and then they phoned me up the next day and said, oh, no, you're fine. <laughs> I must get that CD. Yeah. <laughs> I've still got it at home. I watch it when, when I'm feeling low. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> let's take a small diversion to talk about some massive fines. Who's been fined a record £3.7 billion pounds this week? The banks, Barclays, yeah, the amongst banks. them? Yes, yeah. the banks, and particularly Barclays, mm. who uh, alone have been fined £1.5 And the other bank is RBS. Mm. Which, is which we owned, own. Yeah. So yeah. we've been fined. We've been fined. Yeah. Yes, you lot, you have been guilty <laughs> of fiddling the Forex exchange and you're all going to be fined. It's money that's ours that has now gone, thanks to the criminal activities of a group of bankers. Yeah, who would meet in chat rooms and they called themselves the cartel or the mafia. Yeah, yeah. they were subtle, weren't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the head of Barclays, though, to be fair, Anthony Jenkins, said he deeply regretted the fraud but would still have to charge £25 for issuing that statement. <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, the Mirror Group is to pay damages of £1.25 million pounds to a number of celebrities, including Paul Gascoigne and Sadie Frost. Why? Uh, tapping the phones. Tapping yes. Uh, Paul Gascoigne, I think, was twice a day, I think, for about ten years, they were saying something like that. BBC creative director Alan Yentob will receive £85,000. There was no story about Alan Yentob ever published. No, it's Alan Yentob's no. amazing contact list. He knows everyone. Right. Or so he says. It's pretty depressing <laughs> if, they, if they've been tapping your phone for years and there's no story yeah, that's at what all. <laughs> <laughs> Just some poor man listening be like, oh, Yentob's getting a curry, but that's it. <laughs> so it's the mirror. It wasn't just the evil Murdoch empire. It extends way beyond that to all sorts of other people. It, the, you know, the Mirror and the, and the Sunday Mirror, all sorts of people you, you might have heard of who might have been tapping phones. You mentioned a couple of newspapers there. Is there an editor that's edited both papers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the memory? name just escapes me. <laughs> it's almost like it's escaping jail. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's just... anyway, oh, it's Piers Morgan. That's the one you're trying to think of. Piers <laughs> Morgan. <laughs> Right, now, does anyone want to see what happened to a Spanish politician during a TV debate on Basque separatism? Please say yes. Yes, yes. 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 Here he is. ¿Qué puñetas me va a decir usted a mí de lucha contra el separatismo? Por favor, un poco de respeto. No juro. That woman behind has got a very interesting expression. <laughs> He's a Spanish separatist. Yes. He He's believes the... his teeth shouldn't be with his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is the fallout from the election. Nigel Farage has, of course, survived previous challenges to his authority. In his 2004 power struggle with Robert Kilroy Silk, Nigel faced an all-too-familiar dilemma. <laughs> Their fate will be in each other's hands as they decide whether to share or to shaft. <laughs> The Prime Minister apologised for being under the weather as he unveiled his plans for the GPs to work at weekends. According to the Mirror, while speaking, David Cameron coughed, but the doctor just squeezed his testicles even harder. <laughs> Paul and John, take a look at this. Yeah. Oh, this is Prince Charles in the uh, Republic of Ireland. There's very happy oh, news. Uh, there's his stalker. He's very happy <laughs> there. Um, you, shaking hands you? with dig trees. Right. And there we are. Yes, a historic, in every sense, a historic handshake between Jerry Adams and Prince Charles. I love the way he had a cup of tea, though. It was a sort of prop. Oh, hello, you here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think the cup of tea was a, an anti-hugging device? <laughs> is Jerry Adams famous for being a hugger? 
I think he Do is. You have to come prepared, otherwise he's like, come here. <laughs> he does this thing, he hogs people, and when he backs off, they've got the beard. <laughs> Oh, he's a bit of a card. You wouldn't think so, but... Oh, oh, God, we've had some fun nights. At, uh... <laughs> who, who initiated this uh, reconciliation? Jerry Adams did. Yes. He made the call to the Prince Charles's office yeah. and said, uh, It's on a waste bin. You have five minutes to get it. <laughs> and then he said, uh, Oh, no, sorry, sorry. Oh, God, I'm always doing that. <laughs> what did Martin McGuinness say? about the history between the royal family and the Irish Republicans. Checkered. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Troubled. Say, <clears throat> it's complicated. He said, He's met the Queen, hasn't he? Yes. Oh, yes. I mean, she's initiated the, yes. the meeting between Sinn Féin and, and Charles is just backing it up. Who described Prince Charles as ten years ahead of his time? <laughs> time know. out? Was it time out? <laughs> 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 really, really great review. <laughs> Alf Ramsey. <laughs> No, that's Martin Peters, wasn't Martin, it? Martin Peters, Peters got me ten years every time. His son, Prince Harry. Prince Harry oh, said that. Yes, yeah. He was going through the things that Charles had written letters about. He said, my father never really gets listened to, which is disappointing because whatever he says normally is right and about ten years ahead of when the problems actually happen. Mind you, he didn't spot everything coming. <laughs> <laughs> Did Prince Charles say anything yet about his meeting with Jerry Adams? He, he said it ten years ago. I was <laughs> <laughs> I I um uh, tangentially helped broker peace in Northern Ireland. Uh, because <laughs> Whoa! Whoa. Right, come on, this sit doesn't back. have Let's the hear makings it. of a short one, does it? <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause>, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just booking an alarm call. Well, I <laughs> Because <laughs> uh, during the Good Friday Agreement, uh, Ian Paisley wanted to exile himself from, from the peace process. Mm -hmm. So he went with me to Cameroon to preach to the sinners. Really? Yeah, I spent a week... Uh, I spent <laughs> I a week make him do it. He said, I can't stand any more of this, I need to go to Cameroon with John Ronson. Well, <laughs> he said, I'm going to go to Cameroon, and I said, can I come? Oh, well, yeah, yeah. And he said, OK. So I spent a week in Cameroon with Ian Paisley during the peace process. Oh. I think there's a BBC One sitcom yeah. in this. But... <laughs> Did that contribute? Well, it kept him away from the bloody peace process. <laughs> <laughs> he had three nicknames for me. Uh, the Jew! Um, Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> Hold it. Are you telling us that's the first? They're going to get stronger. Okay, the second one's a bit sweeter. My Jewish friend. And the third that's one, a nickname, yeah. is it? And the third one was my circumcised friend. <laughs> this is a theme, isn't it? Yeah, it is <laughs> Is it a very uh, intimate week in yeah. Africa? <laughs> it, was a, it was a rough week. It, it was, was a rough week. He was just guessing. <laughs> it was a, it was a what rough... happens in Cameroon stays in Cameroon. <laughs> <laughs> we checked into this hotel called The Ranch at a boulevard. This is, the, this is my sweet memory of Ian Paisley, mm. actually, because there's a lot of roughness going on. But this mm. is my <laughs> We checked into this hotel, this really dodgy hotel, like mm. insects everywhere, and I was kind of standing there with my suitcases in my hand. And then I saw him go into his room, and there was a painting of a topless woman on the wall. Mm. Mm. And I saw him take off the painting. And put it in his suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> Reverend Ian Paisley. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace. <laughs> R.I.P. That was his initials. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> so, who did the Queen snob this week? Oh, um, uh, she snubbed the BBC. <gasps> she did. And ITV are going to be showing, the, doing the TV coverage. Yeah, she turned us down. Yeah. What, do you specifically... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, that is true. Do? The Queen has apparently snubbed the BBC by allowing ITV to cover her 90th birthday celebrations because the BBC cocked up the Diamond Jubilee River yeah. patch. That's not a quote. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what advice did Prince Harry have for the government this week? He said they should bring back national service. He did. Oh, uh, yeah. He said that he thought the army had been great for him, but I thought, well, yeah, being a prince has been great for you. I don't get to be a prince. So, on that rationale, Harry, can I be Prince Harry? <laughs> for a bit. For a bit, just like a job share. Which bit of the job do you want? <laughs> the bit where he goes to Chelsea Flower Show for free. <laughs> I don't want to date Chelsea. Chelsea Flower Show wasn't a euphemism, was it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's only 
Yes, this is the historic meeting between Prince Charles and Gerry Adams. Surprisingly, Prince Charles found some common ground with Gerry Adams. The IRA may have caused a lot of suffering, but they did demolish some ghastly 1960s architecture. <laughs> This week, Prince Harry suggested we bring back national service, saying, I dread to think where I'd be without the army. The Navy? <laughs> also this week, the Queen apparently snubbed the BBC by choosing ITV to broadcast her 90th birthday celebrations next year. ITV have promised to produce a very traditional programme, except they'll be replacing the Queen with Holly Willoughby. <laughs> so at the end of that round, the teams have two points each. Three. Three. And we start round two with a question. What is the fastest growing language in the UK? Emoji. It is emoji. In which I happen to be fluent. <laughs> oh, laughing face, laughing face, crying face poo? <laughs> Would you like to explain what it is, Ian? Well, it's not a language, is it? It's, it's, it's people it's putting language. little drawings on texts. People using symbols to create communication. Yeah, it's not a language. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose in the same way hieroglyphics is, but yeah. <laughs> language has moved on a bit since the pictogram. Mm. Or it had until this year when it's moved back again. <laughs> Shall we have a look at some uh, popular emojis? Yes. Popular emojis. Mm. Here's one. Oh. That's crying that, face. Yeah, crying with laughter. Crying with laughter, crying that with one. laughter yeah. Mm. yeah. What about this one? Oh, is he winking? He is winking. Oh, wink. Uh, I, my own particular favourite, ghost with black eye. <laughs> <laughs> Carry out, you seem fluent. I am fluent, definitely. What is ghost with black eye? <clears throat> it's just like... Woo! <laughs> <laughs> but there's no accentuation on it. I can't tell whether it's woo, woo, or woo. <laughs> When the emojis take over and you're filling out your CV... Are they race now? <laughs> yes. Oh, my God, the emojis are coming. <laughs> Don't tell you, Kip. When the future... <laughs> you're not alone, Nick. I am on board oh, with emojis. Good. Yes. If you write all day, the last thing you want to do in the evening is superfluous writing. You That's could fine. go out or talk. If you text me, Ian, saying, do you want to go out, I'd say, woo! <laughs> <laughs> And then you wouldn't know what it meant, so it wouldn't happen. <laughs> no, it wouldn't happen anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, snubbed by Ian Hislop. Mm. <laughs> no, not snubbed. <laughs> I don't know what a text is. <laughs> Maybe you should ask someone else on the panel, wink face. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm not really... Uh... <laughs> I don't actually use emojis myself, unless, of course, it's an absolute em emergency. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Like come on, embrace, embrace the effort. <laughs> I've got to go so, yes, this is the incredible popularity of emojis. Andy Murray uh, famously <laughs> used emojis to capture some of the most important moments in his life, winning an Olympic gold medal, <laughs> winning Wimbledon, <laughs> and his wedding day. <laughs> Can anyone tell me what this story from the week's news is in emoji? Uh, there was a, a couple of guys who wanted to celebrate getting married together and they wanted a cake and this was in uh, Northern Ireland, I believe, and uh, the catering firm were very angry. They said they couldn't do this, but there's a court case and they have to do it because they have to be open to anybody that wants a cake sort of made. So they, they can't sort of say you can't have your cake. That's correct. Let's have a look at a picture of the cake. Beautiful. So, um, if someone went into a Polish cake shop and asked them to make a cake saying, vote you, Kip, would they be allowed to refuse to make that cake? Well, that's why this judgment oh. is yeah. probably going to be reviewed. Mm. Um, it is the equivalent of going into a Muslim-owned um, cake shop and saying, I'd like you to have a face of the prophet on the cake. You're open for business, make me the cake. Mm. Otherwise, it's against the law. So, th this is creating quite a difficult area. It's freedom of expression versus freedom of religion, which, again, is difficult to explain in emojis. <laughs> <laughs> so why Bert and Ernie? Well, I hate to tell you, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to be the one to break it to you, but they're, they're together. Yeah, it's that kind of talk that ruins people's careers. <laughs> <laughs> 
Do you know that Sesame Street have issued an official statement on this yes. incident? <laughs> Absolutely Bert true. Bert and Ernie are not officially gay. They've said Bert and Ernie are best friends. They are not gay, they are not straight, they are poppies. <laughs> They added, they do not exist below the waist. What? Yeah. God, uh, I feel their pain. <laughs> a judge in Belfast has ruled that a Christian-run bakery was wrong to refuse an order for a cake with the slogan, Support Gay Marriage. The Christian bakery specialises in cakes and so bakes only five loaves of bread a day. But thanks to a joint promotion with the fishmonger next door, they still have 5,000 happy customers. <laughs> After winning the case, Kate Lover and gay activist Gary Lee said he'd be celebrating tonight with a candle in his brownie. <laughs> Which means, at the end of this round, it's three points each. <laughs> okay, Time now for the odd one out round. Just one between you this week. Your four are Edward Cocaine, Lord Michael Lord, Norman Conquest, and The Edge. This must be about names. The, the first name, what was his name? Eddie Edward, Cocaine. Edward Cocaine. Uh, the Edge, uh, he recently fell off stage, so he, he literally fell off his own name. So, um... <laughs> One of them, it's their real name, and the others are all made-up names. Yeah, OK. They're not made up, though. It's just their name reflects what they do. Well, can I say, oh. my guess would be that The Edge is made up. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, no, I was thinking Edge is a very cool all made-up names, except all names the one that you up, think sense. is mm. made-up is actually their actual name. Or, well, Lord or, Michael Lord is a lord. Is it? Well, yeah, they, they do what their name is. Apart from... Norman apart Conquest, from who didn't conquest anything. That is correct. <laughs> yes. Okay. I think we've got the answer. Round of applause. Just what the Edge Yes, they all have an app name for their exploits, except for Mr Norman Conquest, who has a decidedly inappropriate one. What is Norman most famous for? Does he lose a lot? Well, he did lose a lot on one occasion. He was in goal for Australia in 1951 when they lost to England 17-0, <laughs> which at the time was a world record international defeat. Wow. We don't have any footage of it, but there is a tapestry. <laughs> <laughs> so, sticking with subjects of appropriate names, shall we have a little quiz? Let's play what jobs do these people do? Fingers on buzzers, and we'll start with Mr T... He. <laughs> he's a clown. Not quite, but he's in that area, he's thank area. God. He was an animator and caricaturist. Ah. Uh, what about Sue Yu? <laughs> she is a lawyer. She is actually a lawyer. Amazing. Fantastic. Which charity <laughs> does Robin Mafood work for? <laughs> Oxfam. Work food for the poor. Food uh, for the poor. Brilliant. And finally, can anyone tell me what area J.W. Splat <laughs> and D. Weedon wrote a medical paper on in 1977? What area of medicine? U urinary tract problems. U urology. Urology. Yes. <laughs> Norman Conquest was the Australian goalkeeper in their match against England in 1951 when the Aussies lost 17-0. So England ran up a cricket score. Well, a cricket score for England. <laughs> Uh, U2's guitarist The Edge uh, fulfilled headline writer's dreams at a concert in Toronto last week when he lived up to his name. And, as you say, he, um, he fell off the edge of the stage. Fell off the edge of the stage, Would yes. you, by any chance, like to have a look at it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It's the second best thing that could happen at a U2 gig. <laughs> <laughs> no one wanted that album on their iPhone. No, uh, we sure didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you probably don't even know it's there. They automatically put one of their albums on everyone's iPhone. What about me? I, I looked at my iTunes. I had John Ronson's MRI results. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't ever stop me on the in-breath yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> My first Stop. thought on hearing that I had stage four cancer was, well, at least I don't need to write any more books. I'm sorry, I just don't have any cancer material. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> it's okay because I don't have cancer. No, I'm glad. So to you hear. are going to write some more books. Oh, yes. Sad face, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Edward Cocaine was recently in court in Florida on a drugs charge. On hearing that the defendant in front of him was called Edward Cocaine, the Florida judge laughed and said, how many times have the police told you to step out of the car during your life? <laughs> Not that many. He's white. <laughs> <laughs> According to the Telegraph, Lord Lord lists gardening and trees among his interest in who's who. <laughs> Lord Lord is in who's who. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> <laughs> Which means at the end of the round, Paul and John have four points, Ian and Carrie have six points. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Time now for the Missing Words round, which this week features, as its guest publication, <coughs> Window Cleaning Magazine. <laughs> After a number of negative articles about one window cleaner, he accused the magazine of a smear campaign. <laughs> <laughs> and we start with, have you seen an interesting picture related to window cleaning? If so, what? Keep it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen an interesting picture related to window cleaning? If so, tell us all about it. Basically, yes. Yeah. <laughs> if so, we'll try to feature it in Window Cleaning <laughs> Magazine. Well, if it doesn't appear in there, you've got no chance <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Next, man keeps what in his fridge? Is it a pint of milk? Dead grandma. <laughs> <laughs> it's 1,000 stolen eggs. That's a big yeah. fridge. I know. <laughs> A factory worker in China was caught with more than a thousand stolen eggs in his fridge after he pinched them from work. Look at that. Whoa. Wow. How and did he get them home? You see on that top shelf as well, there's a little bit of chicken wrapped up. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what came first. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Dalai Lama wants to be reincarnated as what? Dalai Lama. Yeah, that's the gig. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's changed the gig. Has he? He wants to be reincarnated as a beautiful woman. Yes, I'll give you. It's a mischievous blonde woman. <laughs> <laughs> He's thinking Sally Burker. <laughs> <laughs> yes, according to the Telegraph, the Dalai Lama is the world's most famous Buddhist monk. <laughs> mm. It's fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, OK, next. Deborah Morris became what after cleaning three windows in 16.28 seconds? Sexually demanding. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually the fastest female window cleaner in the world. Uh -huh. According to Window Cleaning Magazine, Deborah Morris cleaned three standard 45-inch by 45-inch windows with an 11.75-inch long squeegee <coughs> and 2.37 gallons of water. Somehow that report takes all the romance out of window <laughs> cleaning. <laughs> Next, awful what, blame what? Awful country, blame the government. It's actually awful plane food, blame engine noise. Oh. Scientists claim that airplane noise affects our palate by suppressing certain tastes, but not salty, sour and bitter. Didn't they used to present Top Gear? <laughs> <laughs> Next, what finds new home after it scares the public? Ed Miliband. Scary sculpture of a dragon. It's the statue of a, a very famous uh, American lady. Lucille Ball. Ball. Yes. Wow. Lucille Ball statue finds new home after it scares the public. A statue of Lucille Ball in New York is relocating after it scared local residents. Here's the real Lucille Ball. Beautiful. And here's her statue. Wow. <laughs> I think somebody had a spare statue somewhere. <laughs> yeah, a spare statue of Pele. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, if you are passionate about window cleaning, what? And you will be in heaven. Start cleaning the shard and step backwards. <laughs> <laughs> It's actually, if you're passionate about window cleaning, go to the window cleaner professional trade show <laughs> and you will be in heaven. <laughs> window Cleaner magazine reports that one trade show was attended by facelift, aquadapter, streamline and gripper tank. So that's what happened to So Solid Crew. <laughs> 
so the final scores are John and Paul have seven points, Yay. but Ian and Carriad have nine. Oh. <laughs> On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Carriad Lloyd, Paul Merton and John Ronson, and I leave you with news that... On a bridge in Aberdeenshire, Nicola Sturgeon is annoyed at another passerby shouting Fandabadozi. <laughs> <laughs> the owner of one of Britain's best known stately homes appalls visitors with his lewd behaviour. <laughs> <laughs> After pressure from the party, Nigel Farage agrees to take a break over summer to get fit. <laughs> And after hearing about her son's historic meeting, the Queen also offers her hand to Gerry Adams. <laughs>